We have that new poll from ABC News and the Washington Post that points to start troubles for President Trump. His approval rating just 36 percent, the lowest ever for a president at the six month point. Digging beneath that finding, fewer than one in four Americans say the president's personal behavior is, quote, fitting and proper. 70 percent call it unpresidential. When asked to describe his tweeting habits, 68 percent of Americans call it inappropriate. More than half say the tweets are dangerous. One in five call them refreshing. And the president taking to Twitter to defend his son, Don Jr., as questions grow about that meeting with a Russian lawyer in Trump Tower during the campaign. Our chief White House correspondent, John Carl, is there in Washington, has the latest for us. Good morning, John. Good morning, Robin. After his trip to Paris and a weekend spent watching golf at his New Jersey resort, the president is back here at the White House, fending off new questions related to the Russia investigation. The president appeared relaxed and in good spirits watching the U.S. Women's Golf Open over the weekend at his New Jersey club. But he is fuming about the investigation into Russian meddling in the 2016 campaign. The president's lawyer making it clear who the president believes is leading what he calls a witch hunt. Is he saying that the Mueller investigation is part of a witch hunt? Yes, yeah, look how it started, and as it relates, especially as it relates to the president. The president is now also lashing out at those raising questions about his eldest son, Don Jr., and the June 2016 meeting between members of Trump's inner circle and a Russian lawyer that was held at Trump Tower, tweeting, my son Don is being scorned by the fake news media. Fake news is distorting democracy. But new details emerged even after Don Jr. himself released emails about the meeting. Do we now know everything about that meeting, who was there, and what follow-up there was? The meeting in and of itself, of course, as I've said before, is not a violation of the law. The president was not aware of the meeting and did not participate in it. We now know that not just one, but two well-connected Russians were in that meeting arranged with a promise of providing damaging information about Hillary Clinton. A Russian lawyer aligned with the Kremlin and a Russian-American lobbyist who was once an officer in a Soviet counterintelligence unit. This is about as clear evidence you could find of intent by the campaign to collude with the Russians. In a new ABC News poll, 63 percent of Americans think the meeting was inappropriate. The president has said that he would testify under oath about all of this. Would you be willing to speak under oath to uh, give your version of, of 100 percent? But his lawyer said he doesn't think the testimony will happen. The president you don't think it will happen? He would do it. If, yeah, at this point, we have no indication at all whatsoever uh, of, of an investigation of the president with regard to any of this. I also asked the president's lawyer if the president would consider pardoning the key figures in this investigation, uh, people like former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn, his former campaign chairman Paul Manafort. Many Democrats fear that he will do that. The president's lawyer said he hasn't talked to the president about that, but he certainly didn't rule it out, saying, quote, he can pardon individuals, of course. That's because the founders of our country put that in the Constitution, the power to pardon. Robin? We'll wait to see if that happens. So we're going to have to still wait on this health care vote because it's been put on hold again. It's been put on hold again because Senator John McCain uh, had surgery. It's expected that he'll take at least a week, maybe more, to recover. Uh, Robin, I think it's quite possible this health care vote gets delayed until after the summer, sometime in September. That is quite possible. All right, John, thank you.